If I could press a button and AI could produce your next thumbnail that's gonna double your traffic and even told you which thumbnails to recreate for your old video so you could double that traffic too, you'd be interested, right? Well, you're gonna love this video. See, successful YouTubers have known how these massive Hollywood posters hold the key to success with your click-through rate, your CTR. And I'm gonna reveal that as well in this video. And how do professionals like Mr. Beast produce such stunning colors on their thumbnails, where it's almost like they contrast, they pop, they stand out. But first, why do we care? Well, let's take a look at these movie posters. Imagine the time that goes into making a movie poster, particularly if you go back before the days of digital. And do you think it's a fluke that Netflix and Amazon use thumbnails too? So rather than having words just scattered through a listing, when you go to YouTube or Netflix, you get thumbnails. Why? Because people react. Uh, there's emotion in thumbnails. And with that in mind, there's a new split testing tool that YouTube's produced so that you can pick the best thumbnail for your video. But more of that a bit later. So as a designer for over 30 years using Photoshop and producing imagery, I understand the power of design. And just one color change or a slight tweak on a thumbnail and you can see it shoot up from 5% click-through rate to 10% quite quickly. And that's why you can't second guess thumbnails because people react differently to what you expect sometimes. And the only way you get the facts is by split testing. However, AI has produced some incredible tools recently where you can now produce thumbnails just using AI. Look at this for an example. This is called Firefly. It's free. It's by Adobe. You can try it here on this address, firefly.adobe.com. It's an AI tool from Adobe where you don't need to have Photoshop, but it gives you some incredible power. And you can design thumbnails. It's a high quality and it's user-friendly. As you can see here, you can put together quite quickly a thumbnail that could compete with some of the thumbnails that Mr. Beast has produced. With this in mind, notice what Ed from Film Booth said the other day when he was interviewed. AI, I hope it gets good enough to completely run me out of business. I can't stand making thumbnails. It's just a, a flipping nightmare. <laughs> Everyone hates it. It's the highest stakes that you put into a YouTube video. I just want to make videos. I don't want to come up with an image that represents it and tricks people into clicking on something. And, ah, uh, yeah, I can't stand them. But I love trying to help people do them. So if it wipes out my business, everyone wins. Apart from me, but I'll get over it. But yeah, <laughs> what's going to happen is they're going to get really good at image creation. There's about three people on the planet I know that are really, really good at thumbnail strategy. And they're just slammed all the time like with, with the clients. So it doesn't matter unless it can work out to come up with a thumbnail strategy, then no, it's never gonna happen. If it does, everyone wins. So not everyone enjoys producing thumbnails. AI is a great way to help you if you struggle in that department. But what about these well-known secrets that Hollywood people have used for years that you can use and adopt and put on your thumbnails today? Well, we need to establish a few facts that have been learned over the years. Number one, posters were early thumbnails they learned quite quickly that successful movie posters often correlated to a higher box office revenue. So that's the first thing, and that's the same today. Secondly, images. Images, simple iconic images are often used. And one of the things that you can learn from Hollywood is they recognize that when emotions are produced, so take for example here, we've got the poster of Jaws from 1975, and there it shows this menacing shark and that put a sense of urgency, a sense of suspense and fear in the audience before they went to see the movie. So emotions, curiosity, anticipation, if you can get that in a thumbnail, uh, that will certainly help on the click-through rate. The third thing is notice that often they use more than one poster. Now I'll come on to that in a moment, but that's really a very, very valuable lesson that we need to take from this video today. And finally, of course, it was all based on cost, return on investment, ROI. Were these thumbnails going to bring in people through the doors of the cinemas? Well, marketing teams recognize that just subtle changes, variations to the poster, a change in the color, those things can make a massive difference to how successful the film was. So with all these lessons in mind, there's some new tools that have come out by TubeBuddy and you can download it for free down below. So I'll put a link to the description, click on that, install it into your browser and you'll be able to use these tools. And I think there's a trial there for a month at least if you don't have access to it already.
And so as you can see here, it gives me an idea of how much one would work over the other. So I can put one thumbnail against the other and then with intelligence it tells me it has uh, a heat map as well of where it thinks people will click or what's going to affect the emotions of the people. And that's all based on AI and it's continually learning from everyone using it. So that's one thing you can do. A second thing you can do is you can run two campaigns together. So you can split test one against the other and I do this again all the time. And of course, if you get a clear winner, that becomes a new thumbnail and then you try and beat it. So again, this is how you gradually increase it. Even 1% increase of a click-through rate can make a massive difference if you've got thousands of people coming across your videos. So I suggest you just download it and try it out on the link below. But you may say, well, is it really worth doing all this? Absolutely. They spent millions budgeting on marketing to find out how the best posters would perform in Hollywood before they then did the general release. So the way it worked in Hollywood in the past was that they would take variations of the poster, they would then take sample audiences, and they would then evaluate, they'd have focus groups, and they would make sure that the best version that resonated with the audience was the one that was used. And that's why you can't really see the other posters today, because one was far more successful than the others. And if you take E.T., which was a 1982 film, there the budget for posters and marketing was around $10 million. Of course, we know today that audiences recognise that there was one with the moon, but of course there was one with the Earth as well that was used uh, in its early stages. And in the end, that $10 million investment of dollars led to $435 million, the highest grossing film of its time. What about Star Wars 1977, where the original Star Wars film had a marketing budget of around 7 million. Posters were produced, but the iconic one stands out now. Again, look at the colors, it's far more vivid than the older one. And that exceeded 775 million worldwide because they were split testing in effect back then. Today, you can split test your thumbnails and you'll get the same results. But how do you know which videos need to be tested? Uh, which ones are going to bring the best returns? Well, there's again a brilliant tool here called Click Magnet. It tells you what expressions worked best, what words work best on your thumbnails, what videos would benefit from a better click-through rate because the retention is so good, but no one's getting through to the video. You could have the best video on earth, but if the thumbnail doesn't get people to go and see it, then it's gonna have no effect whatsoever. It's like having the best movie and yet, no, having no posters, no marketing, people don't know about it. No one ever sees it, no one ever talks about it. So in effect, you need to market your videos through great thumbnails. And that's why Click Magnet is another useful tool from TubeBuddy again on that same download. Also, there's a thumbnail analyzer, so you can upload three or four thumbnails and it'll tell you which one it thinks has the emotions, will get the clicks. And that gives you kind of a batting order. And then you can split test them in that order, which is what I'm doing at the moment. Basically, this video is full of strategies as to how you can improve your click-through rate. And I've seen 15, 20% click-through rates by just continuously going through this process on this video again and again. And I just wanted to share that with you. But I'd be interested to know what tools you use as well. So if you've got a strategy, put it in the comments below. What do you use to split test? Or how do you go about deciding what thumbnail you're gonna use on your video? Put it down in the comments below and I may well use that information as well on a future video. But I also promised I'd show you how you can make it pop, how you can make it stand out, how it has a real long, strong contrast against other thumbnails. And that improves the click-through rate too. And this is something that Mr. Beast uses and it's kind of got some settings that he doesn't really share, but I thought I'd share with you. So let me show you how it works. Now, if you've got a photo editor like Canva, GIMP, Pixar, or just use Photoshop, which is what I use, which is a market leader for thumbnail, so I'd really recommend that. So you produce your thumbnail and you're happy with it. You just need to make a separate layer and you just want to then make it shiny and stand out for all the right reasons. And I just follow this four step process and you might want to follow along and then do the equivalent in whatever photo editing software you use. But number one, you just want to desaturate it. So take a layer, take the whole layer, desaturate it and add that as a layer. And you want to put this right at the top. Number two, then I use the high pass filter. So there you just take the filter high pass. Normally a radius of about five pixels works for me, but you can change that depending on how you want it to look. Number three, you then use overlay. So you take the layer, you then overlay it over the whole of your thumbnail, 
and notice then the effects it has where it really makes it pop, it really stands out. And that's how you get that kind of that contrast. You can see the difference here on the thumbnail I was making. And then finally just save it, fourth step. And that's how I produce my thumbnails. And you can try that too, or the equivalent on your photo editing software. And thumbnails, of course, produce click-through rates. Click-through rates can be really rewarding if you've got a great video. But to make a great video, there are several things that people are still doing wrong. And this is information that's been on the internet for a while, on YouTube videos for a while, but the algorithm changed. YouTube's algorithm changed recently. And so those seven things you need to know about, because by doing them, they'll either make no difference or they'll even cause a damage to your channel. So head over to this video now. This important video is gonna help you to know the seven things you should be avoiding if it comes to your YouTube channel and having success in the future with it. I'll see you on that video.